get on up to lesson on coding. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Lesson on Coding. My name is Ryan Lesson. So in today's video, I'm going to be building a custom autocomplete with React. I did a previous video on this, but that code was not up to par. The quality wasn't good. So I decided to remove that video and create a brand new video with more high quality code than the last video. Let's get started. We're going to be using React hooks and functional components here. So let's think about the state that we're going to need for this. We need a display, which will display our options. And then we're going to do use states. And then this is just going to be false. And then we're going to need a options, which is going to be set options, which is going to be use states, and then just an empty array. And then we need one more, which is going to be uh, search, which will be what we're typing in the input that we want to filter the options with. Okay. Oh no. Use states, and then we're going to put in an empty string, which I'll touch on later while we're doing. So there we go. We have all of our state defined for this autocomplete. Now let's go get our options. Instead of using just a static array, we're going to be using the Pokemon API to grab our data. So I've read through the API documentation. There's no easy way to just get the name and the sprite, and that's what we're trying to do here to display as the option. So we're going to have to send off 20 API requests to grab all that data, put in a temporary array, and then call the set options function to finally update that after we have it created how we want. So we're going to be using use effect. Okay, so first let's get our Pokemon temporary array. There we go, and this is where we're gonna hold everything. And then we're gonna need our promises, which is gonna be a new array of 20. And we're gonna fill it so we can map over it. Okay, so here we're gonna be getting the value and the index. And then we're gonna be putting a fetch here. So let me grab that URL that we will be using. Okay, and one thing to note is that I'm using I plus one because there's no Pokemon that's number zero. We're gonna be starting at Pokemon number one. And then format it, and there we go. We have our array of 20 promises, so or 20 fetches. So now let's execute those fetches and get an array of promises. We're gonna do promise dot all promises. And then we're gonna do dot then. And this is a Pokemon array. And then we're going to return here. And then now we have a Pokemon array filled with promises. We're going to have to basically map over everyone. Dot map value, or we'll call this res for response. And then we're going to do res.json. So we're going to take that promise and we're going to change it to json. Then we're going to call dot then on all of those. Okay, so in here, we're gonna be deconstructing our JSON object that we get back from the Pokemon API. So as I said earlier, we're gonna get the name and then we're gonna get the, the sprite, which is front default. And we're gonna call it sprite, there we go. And we will come here, click here, and now let's create that. Let's create that Pokemon array. So we're gonna pass the name and sprite. Okay, then now we have all that at the very end, let's just update our set options with the Pokemon array that we just created. Perfect, no errors. And then let's check our inspector to make sure it worked. And as you can see, it's calling a ton of times and this is because we just need to come in here and add that. So that, so that array would make sure it only gets called once. Pokemon is not a function. Pokemon.push, excusez-moi, there we go. Perfect, now that we have all the Pokemon created, next thing is we're gonna display these Pokemon with our display state. So we're gonna come here, so we're gonna do display and, and then I have all the CSS defined, so we only really, so I only really need to show off the uh, functionality of so class name equals auto container.
And then in here we're going to do options dot map. We're going to do value index. And then we're going to come in here and we were, we're going to make a div. Okay. So within this div, we're going to add a couple of things. We're going to have span, which is going to be the value that, what did I call it? I called it v, v dot name. And then we're going to have an image. And then the image's source will be v dot sprite. And then the alt tag will just be Pokemon. And we need to come here and add a few things. We're going to add a class name, which will be option and then we need the key which will be just the index and there we go so now let's actually change the display so we can see it so we're going to come in here we're going to add it on click and we're going to basically toggle it whenever you click the uh, input so we're going to do on click then we do set display and then this is going to be bang display so we're just going to toggle it Let's click it, and there we go. We have all our Pokemon, and it goes away. So next up, when we click on this, we want that to appear in the search, the Bulbasaur name. So to do that, we need to do a couple things. First, I'm going to define the function that we're going to be calling. So I'm going to do set Pokedex. Dex. Oh. So we're going to do set Pokedex, and it's going to equal, we're going to pass in a Pokemon, which I'll do in a second. And then basically, this stays going to call set search and this is where we're going to change the value of our input to to the pokey and then we're going to close it after you click on one of the options so set display is false okay perfect got that down so let's come down here let's change the value to search let's come here as well let's come right here and let's do an on click Okay, so this on click, all this on click is going to do is it's going to just pass through that set pokedex function that I just have. So we're basically going to do v dot, or we're going to do set pokey, set pokedex equals v dot name. Okay. And then there we go, we have this working, but we can't remove it because we need to on change here. So now we're going to get into the actual filtering of the autocomplete. So, when this changes, we're going to call set search, set search equals search. Okay. Set search, no, excuse me, set search equals event.target.value. And then we need to also pass in the event right here. So that will give us the search. And then we're going to come here and then we're just going to add a filter to this. And so this filter is basically going to deconstruct the object. So we have that object and let's deconstruct the name from it. So we're going to be doing name.index of name.index of and in here we're, we will be using the search dot to lowercase. So we don't need to worry about any of the capital casing. And then right after that right here we need a greater than negative one. So that empty string that I used before will resolve to zero if there is an empty string passed in. So that works out really well. Click here, let's open it, let's type in IV sore. Click on it, perfect. So now we have all the functionality of the autocomplete. And this is working perfectly. Okay, so now one last thing we need to do, when I click away from this, I want this to close. So we're going to have to do kind of a click outside directive. This is not Angular. So we're just going to set click outside functionality. And we can do this very easy with another React hook called use ref. So I'm going to come in here, wrapper ref equals use ref. And then I'm going to set the initial state to null. Okay, then we're going to come into here. And then I will add the ref as wrapper ref. Okay. Perfect. So next thing we're going to do is add another use effect. So this use effect will be setting uh, event listeners so we know when the mouse is pressed down. So 
we do window or excuse me document dot add event listener mouse down and then we're going to call this handle handle click outside which is a function that I'll define in a second and then we also need a return here because when this is closed we want to remove this event listener uh, is it like that uh, yes it is okay so within this return we're going to be called documents dot remove event listener mouse down and then we're going to pass in handle click outside perfect so now we're adding it and we're removing it and let's also add this empty erase list is not added multiple times now let's finally add this handle click outside and this is we're gonna get the event from it okay so in here we're gonna quickly just deconstruct the object that we have so it comes in as like an object with current so this is the rep I'm talking about and we're just gonna call it wrap and then we will put right here the wrapper rep okay perfect now here is where we just finally determine if it's clicked outside. So we're going to put in wrap and bang wrap dot contains wrap dot contains event dot target. Okay. And then if that's true, we're going to set the display to false. Boom. Click here, click outside, it closes perfectly. Charizard. Oh, let's add a tab index to it so we could tab through it real quickly. Perfect. Charizard. All right, and that's it. That's the React Autocomplete Custom Autocomplete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. And as always, take care. Have a great day. Woo!